Hello, um, I will talk today about um, um, a file synchronizer, which is called C-Sync. It's a, a bidirectional file synchronizer, and the main purpose of this is to provide home, uh, ro <coughs> roaming home directories uh, for Linux systems. So let's get um, an overview um, what this is about. Normally, what you what you have or what you want here, just an example with uh, with Windows. Assume that you have several Linux clients which are in, for example, in an Active Directory um, environment, and you are working on a Linux workstation, and you have a server with a share where you can put data on, and what you want is um, on login that your data is synchronized from the server to your client, then you work, and when you log out, that the data is synchronized back. Um, so that you have a backup and have um, in actual data if you, for example, uh, log into another um, to another client. Um, I want to make sure that this is that we don't here talk about to uh, synchronize profiles. This is just about synchronizing files. So there is no merge of content uh, or anything like that going on. Um, maybe in the future. Um, <coughs> Some, I want to make sure that you understand what the conflict is, uh, which I will talk about it. Um, simply assume you have two directories, you have the same file in two, uh, these two directories. Um, you edit uh, both files and they have different content and if you want to synchronize these files, you have a conflict because both files have changed. And um, I will tell you how we uh, will resolve this later. So um, let's look a little bit at the concepts. Um, what, we, uh, what we have now is um, C-Sync, which is uh, a library um, with, um, with a simple uh, command line client. And what, it, what c -Sync does is um, it does a synchronization in, in several steps or several phases. The first is that you collect metadata from your file system. So this means that you walk over um, a file system tree or a, tree, a directory tree and collect the metadata. And then you check the metadata normally uh, with a database. So this is called update, update detection. After that, you, um, you, you do this for um, for example, if you synchronize with a uh, Linux client and, and the server, then you do the update detection for, uh, for, um, on your client and then on, on the server. And the next step is that you compare the metadata. So you know what you have on, on the client and on the server. You compare them and decide which file needs to be synchro synchronized in which direction. And the final step is then simply to copy the files, which is called propagation. Um, so <clears throat> let's look at how updates are detected. Um, assume that you have um, that you get the metadata from a file. That we use uh, the modification time to detect if a file has changed, and we have a database um, with with an entry for each file we already synchronized. And then we simply uh, compare the file or the modification, file, uh, modification time of the file with um, the entry in the database. If there is no entry in the database of that file, then we have a new file. If the modification time is newer, then the file has changed and needs to be synchronized. Um, if it is equal, then there are no changes. And if uh, both files on both replicas or on the, uh, on the client and on the server have changed, then yeah, you have conflict. Um, so what do we do if we detect a conflict? And uh, this is important currently. There is only one algorithm to handle these conflicts. It is called the merge algorithm. And this algorithm doesn't need any user interaction. It is used by uh, Microsoft for roaming profiles. Uh, the intention is uh, to not to be better uh, than Microsoft. The reason is I've developed this um, especially 
for um, for Samba or for Windows environments where you, where you use Samba or a part of Samba to uh, join a Linux client uh, to an Active Directory domain, and if it detects a conflict, then it will use the most recent file and will override the f the, the file on the other replica. So this means that it is possible that you will lose any data, but um, it turned out that this is working really great on Microsoft, and so uh, that's why I implemented it in the same way, so that um, most users um, are, who are used to it uh, don't get confused. Um, the plan is to support um, other uh, conflict algorithms in the future, but uh, not at the moment. So CSync uses um, doesn't have any special protocol. It uses what is already available. So protocols which are supported are, for example, SMB um, with lab SMB client from Samba to synchronize with an uh, with an uh, Windows server, or you can synchronize with an with a Samba server. Um, which should have uh, CIF's uh, Unix extensions enabled, or you can use um, you can synchronize using SFTP, which is done with libssh. Um, this is currently supported. It's wrong that this will be supported in um, this version. Um, zero dot forty three is already out. The next ver I will release the next version next week, which has been updated to use a new version of libssh, and you can use this file synchronizer to synchronize local directories too. Um, the difference between, for example, <coughs> I think most of you know rsync. rsync is a unidirectional um, file synchronizer, so it just uh, synchronizes in one direction, so it is more, uh, the purpose of it is for backups, and here you have a synchronizer which synchronizes uh, in both directions um, and you can use it for local directories too to keep them completely in sync. Um, just for, uh, for some developers who are interested in how this is done, CSync uses a red black tree to store all the information in memory so it is really fast, especially on update detection. Um, and if you do reconciliation, then um, this is completely done with on the red black tree, and it is uh, really fast. And if you have a lot of files, then it is uh, can do it in in less than one second normally. Uh, SQL database is used uh, to store all the metadata you need for the synchronization. It has a virtual I/O plugin. Uh, a virtual I.O. plug-in system to support all the protocols. Currently, these are, as you have uh, seen, uh, SMB and SFTP. Um, I haven't looked at other broader protocols yet, but... Where is this page? Um, there... I haven't... I haven't looked at the other protocols, uh, but it would be possible to simply support them. Um, and CSync has been uh, developed with uh, unit testing framework, so if you, uh, for example, want to create a new I.O. plugin, uh, a new, a new I.O. plugin uh, for the system, then you can simply run the testing framework and make sure that it works. Um, if you want to now have roaming home directories using CSync, then this is done um, in the PAM stack. There is a PAM module which is called PAM CSync, and <clears throat> this PAM module does authentication management to get the password, and it passes it to the session management, and this uh, will call the file synchronizer and synchronize all the files. Um, the problem here is that the PAM stack is really old and during file synchronization you are completely blocked during um, the login process. Uh, this, uh, the problem is that maybe some users get confused here because 
say, think the whole machine uh, blocks here, but there is no possibility, possibility to give feedback on the synchronization uh, process back to the uh, to the system and, and to show it to the user. Um, <clears throat> PAM CSync um, has some features, especially it uh, works really good with PAM WinBind. Uh, and if you use PAM WinBind, then, then it has a special mode that it gets the information from the Active Directory server. Um, it has Kerberos support. So if you use um, the SMB plugin, <coughs> Um, it, will synch it will use Kerberos for the synchronization or for the credentials. It has, um, ex can exclude users uh, which you don't want that they uh, uh, get synchronized. Um, and um, I've implemented some more features uh, to change server locations um, with a list there because um, some user requested it. And um, the source code is also um, at the same place as you can find the file synchronizer called CSync. So I have some plans for the future, but I don't know if I will find time uh, in the next uh, or in this year to implement everything. So <clears throat> one thing which has been requested would be free IPA integration. Um, free IPA is an identity management like uh, Active Directory, but only for Linux. And here, you, what, what I want uh, is a way that you can define a roaming home in free IPA, and free IPA has to provide a way that, uh, that it can pass this directory to the PAM stack and I can use it uh, to set up synchronization for it. Um, if you are using already using free IPA, you can use uh, PAM CSync and CSync with uh, the SFTP protocol. Um, you just have to, uh, to set it up on an every machine and there is no central uh, possibility to change it. Um, then several use, uh, some users have requested uh, if it would be possible to integrate uh, GUI support. Um, <clears throat> for this, um, I want to create a conflict algorithm. So if you want to, to solve a conflict, there is one possibility, which is the merge algorithm, um, to always use the latest file, and another would be, or the correct uh, solution would be to ask the user what he wants to do, and for this you need a, a GUI application. And um, it's really hard to support it um, with PAM because you have, don't have any conversation with PAM, and for this you need um, a GUI application which uses CSync to synchronize all the stuff. Um, the plan, it would be possible to support uh, more protocols in the future, like um, maybe it is possible to t talk to an R-Sync daemon uh, and to um, differential um, just to synchronize diffs. Um, WebDAV would be a possibility and um, an own daemon um, which has MIME type support there, uh, which has MIME type support too to merge contents would be nice too. Um, some users ask if this would be possible, not, but not um, at the moment. And I'm thinking about a bigger picture of file synchronization, but this needs uh, a lot of work, and for this um, you need a daemon, but this would be a start to uh, research the stuff. So <clears throat> if you have questions, um, we have, I think, two minutes left. You can ask them now or grab me a here at FOSTEM and ask. Um, there is a user guide which describes everything I've talked about it uh, in details. Uh, please take a look at it uh, if you have further questions or ask me. Yeah? Uh, have you thought about supporting SVN as a, as a transport mechanism so that every file that has a conflict actually gets stored in the server with the previous version uh, branched or something similar so the user can just go there and... Now, the plan was completely here to be th that you can 
the everything you can do everything um, as a user with protocols which are available and you don't need to install um, a, ser a special server component. But I'm not sure if, if Subversion would be suitable for that. Uh, version Mercurial yeah, I think so. we are handling here files and the best is normally to stay at the file system and yeah, but it, maybe. 